Hey guys, welcome back to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. Happy New Year, it's 2019. I, it seems weird. It seems weird to say because we were still here, we've been here, but now we're here. So, hallelujah. It's one year older and supposedly wiser, Katie. That's, that's what we're going with. Um, we have an exciting year of shows scheduled for us this year. Uh, we've got a bunch of different stuff coming up. Katie and I talked and we decided that we needed a color theory uh, number of episodes. So we're going to do three to four uh, color theory episodes. And then I think really we probably ought to touch on some composition Activated. episodes as well. Yes. Um, with this year, yes, that's exactly back to basics is what we're going to be doing. So we are going to be going into, we, we've covered all the mediums as far as we did shows on watercolor and acrylic and oils where we talked about all the brands and kind of, you know, what might work for your price point, what might work for the level of, um, kind of art that you're working at now. Uh, if you want to be professional, other things that you might want to look at. So now we're going back to the basics as far as, okay, you want to work in this medium. So many people ask us, I know they ask you, Katie, on social media probably, um, and they, they talk to me as well, about, um, you know, I'm, I've only ever done watercolor, but I'd really like to try acrylic, or I would really like to try oil. How do I start? What are the bare basic minimum items that I need to be able to actually, you know, produce a painting? and not feel like, oh, you know, I've got two brushes and I've got, you know, three colors. I don't want to have to mix 900 things. So we're doing episodes where we're going to focus on, you know, okay, say if you're starting in watercolor, these are the minimum things that you need to be able to successfully produce some work so that you're not going to get into it, not have enough, feel frustrated, but you're also not spending a lot of money and breaking the bank on a medium that might not be for you and that's okay to have that not every medium is for every artist there are mediums that I don't like I just generally don't talk about them Frida probably does Frida's looking at me in, with an evil smile <laughs> uh, so it's so that's okay and so that being said we're gonna talk about the good basic things that you do need to get started in the medium and then we'll actually do some demos with them uh, we've decided that our New Year's resolution, Katie, for the show was to do more demos in 2019. Um, so when we do these shows where we talk about new mediums, we're going to do a small, very basic demo. It's not going to be like a great big finished painting, but we're going to actually do some demo work with it. Um, so that being said, that's what we've got that's going to be coming up this year. Uh, we're going to make sure that we've got a month out of shows on the Jerry's uh, Artorama website. So what you're gonna do is go to jerrysartorama.com. You'll type in um, Jerry's Live. That will pull up the list of shows. You can go ahead and sign up for those ahead of time. So it will send you reminders and it puts it on your calendar, correct, Katie? Mm -hmm. So that then you can sign up for the things that you're interested in, you don't miss them. And every time one comes down the next Tuesday, another one's going to go up so that we always have about a month out of shows for you to know what's coming up. Um, the very popular, at least it, it seemed really popular, and then it became uber popular last year, didn't it, Katie? The seventh annual self-portrait contest for Jerry's. It's very exciting for Katie and I. It also is, is a lot of work. My life for the next three months. Yes, it <laughs> is. Um, starting Monday, January 14th, which is just around the corner, um, and going to from open from January 14th to April 14th, anytime during that time, you can submit entries uh, into the self portrait contest. Can they only submit one? Is that correct? You can submit one artwork. Um, so that means you've got a large window of time. You've got, you know, more than two months. Wait, you might do something you like sooner. Just make sure you put some sort of reminder on your phone or calendar or something like that so that you don't get up into the 14th and then go oh my gosh I don't have you know good quality images of your artwork or anything like that there are 33 winners so it's not just like a first second and third place um, they'll be announced June 10th it's four thousand dollars worth of prizes Frida and I were saying earlier today why can't we the, we would like a shopping spree at Jerry's 
Um, the grand prize is a $2,000 shopping spree on jerrysorderama.com as an e-gift card. Second place is $850, third place is $400, and then there are 30 honorable mentions that are $25 e-gift cards each. So it's a good way to potentially get a little bit of change to be shopping on the website. Um, there were 2,500 submissions last year for the portrait contest. Um, they're going to put up a link for it for where you can go and actually enter it. You can also go and look at all the winners from last year. And I think it's still got the winner from 2017 on there, I believe. Do you know if you click on that, if that'll take you to the gallery of all those? Because that was a really good year as well. Uh, I don't, okay. actually. The, all, some of the galleries are on, if they want to go back and see the past winners, they're all, if you scroll through our Facebook okay. albums, they're in there as okay. well as on our Pinterest page. Okay. It does have the 2018 winners gallery. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know if it had the 17 because there's like the one winner one under it. I noticed. I didn't know if you've clicked on that if it went to anything. Okay. Anyway, but they're they, on Pinterest and Facebook if they'd like to see them. They, they were amazing. Research. Amazing artwork. So it'll give you kind of an idea of it's not, we get such a mix of entries. There's certain styles that seem kind of predominant one year, and then there's different stuff, don't you think, Katie? Like, mm -hmm. some media will be really popular one year, and then the next year it's like something totally different. And I think this last year was the rise of mixed media with the gal that won. Yeah. That was just it's fantastic. A lot of it to you last yeah. Year. Um, hints, helpful hints that I'm going to tell you from having to look through and help pare down entries. If you don't have it framed in to the edge of your artwork, not not like including your frame take it out of the frame we've talked about where the girls have at in the um, description for this show they've put two links one is to all of the shows that we've done from the beginning of time till episode 86 or episode 85 from last year so two full years worth of shows in chronological order the other one is a link to them in the order of if you want to look for oils it'll put you scroll down the list and it'll be all the episodes for the oils same for drawing same for you know art for lessons for all sorts of different things so you've got two options for how to look at those will did an episode on how to take photographic images of your artwork if you're not sure how to do it go back and watch that episode that was with us it was fantastic it really helped a lot just if you weren't sure he even talked about how to do them with a cell phone didn't he katie so go back and look at those because any artwork that's taken where like you can see the chair or the cats like peeking around the artwork or any of those types of things those just get automatically disqualified so just so you know that's that's something to pay that's attention to yes because i'm i'm sorry even if it's the best one in the world if you aren't going to bother to take a decent photo guess what you that's that or we don't do that to yourself because it's not in 3D, we can't yes. tell what's actually part of yes. what we Yeah, well, yeah. Is it a Trump lawyer of just an artwork right. sitting there on the ground with a chair behind it? Exactly. We've had those. They weren't a Trump lawyer. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so do yourself a favor with that. Another thing, really honestly, do yourself a favor. We get a lot of students that submit work. I think there's teachers that we will get sometimes what has got to be an entire class <laughs> of student self-portraits where it's very obviously an assignment, it's very obviously the same assignment because there'll be like 30 of them and they will all be the same, like they're holding a sphere, they're doing this, they're doing that. You know, people can tell when it's a project. It's one thing for a project to be well done, but a lot of times your heart and soul aren't into those. I would suggest taking the time and doing something, a self-portrait of yourself that you really are in love with because that love kind of shows in your artwork. Um, any other tips that you can think of, Katie? Those were the two main things that it was like, eh. self-portrait. It means it's a portrait of you. Of you, yeah. You don't know how many people that we that we get. And, and I mean, it can be a figurative self. We've had some that was just like, I'm not, oh yeah, that makes sense. Is yes. photography an accepted medium for this? No, it is not. It needs to be actual artwork, digital, digital artwork art. is it. Is allowed, I believe. It is allowed, okay. Um, but not a photograph. But not a photograph. Okay. It can't be a, 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 we were saying in the meeting, we love seeing male cell phone yeah. selfies, but yes. it doesn't count as fine art. No, cell phone selfies don't don't count as a, Yeah. it is a self-portrait of sorts, but not an artwork self-portrait that we want. So, so if you kind of follow along with those, that should help out. Good luck to everybody. 
you got some time. So, so that's what you got. I know. It's 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 like that's my favorite thing. And but it, it last year was very overwhelming, sitting and paging through 2,500 submissions in one day. Um, so we do keep them anonymous when we're going through them. Just FYI. Yes. So, nobody. So if you watch the show and Amy knows your name. Doesn't yes. Help no. You. I, I I won't know. And uh, there are some people whose work I recognize, but it's because I've seen their artwork out in the real world, like in magazines or things like that. And particular styles, I'm pretty Can good you at, at the telling. Judging to them? No. We would you like to explain sure. that because that was not no, in the email that I got. Two rounds of judging. Okay. Um, the first one is well, there's actually three. The first one is we have a publicly voted. Yes. So we'll put okay. All the, all the image gallery will be up. Everybody can vote. You mm -hmm. can share it. Um, and then we have it happening at the same time a round of um, jurors who yes. will pick the top 25 top, or top 30, top 30, whatever it is. I can't remember. I can't remember what we did last year. And then those top 60 or whatever it is go in together and get judged by a different group of people yes. to pick our final winner. Okay. So there's a lot of rounds. Yes. So you got the ones that are the popular choice vote which will be on there on the website. So people, there's a lot of people that get together and get friends. If you got a lot of friends, it's a good way to get some votes. Yeah. And then there's a, a group of jurors and then it goes to and a final group yeah. once it's been narrowed down uh, to whatever whatever kind. I don't even remember what the count was last year. It was a lot. <laughs> so, um, all right. So just wanted to go ahead and mention that now to give you guys time since that just came up and we just talked about that. Wanted to give you guys time to really be working on it. So um, then uh, we've mentioned the Facebook listings. Do you guys have that on there? So look at the show description. Uh, that needs to be after we're done, right? Could they can't look at it. Can they look at that? At this, it's going to click and take them away from the show, correct? If they open it in another tab, they can't. Okay. Be, be savvy and open it in another tab. Don't right, open a new tab. Okay. So, all right. So those that, I guess that's the news that's there. Um, what people have been doing in the meantime, we've got, if you are relatively new to us, maybe you felt a little unsure about whether to join the Jerry's Facebook Live group. There's that. I'm not sure how many members we have now. Speaking of, did we tell her what we were going to do? I so we have a do. whole bunch of people from the beginning of time that have not answered their questions. Okay. So over what, 300. Over 300. Okay. People. So what Amanda and I decided to do is for the new year, we're going to wipe, wipe that, that out okay. and start fresh. That makes so sense. So if you go to our group page and it's no longer saying you have a pending one, if okay. you didn't answer the question, just request it again. We're not doing it. Okay. You yes. There's there's no it. malice intended, but when there's 300 people with memberships pending there that are not answering the question for us to be able to put them in, that's a lot of work for right. these guys to have to then sift through things. Well, so we don't want to... Clean slate. Want to be in the right. Because we well, like a lot of friends add people right. to groups, and then you're like, "How did I even get added to this?" Which some of the groups you don't have to answer a question, and then suddenly you're getting all these notifications. So, <laughs> be kind and talk to your friends and explain what you're going to do first, just to make sure they want to be in the group. That's cool. Then, if you don't have a pending member, clean slate right now. So, if you had applied and not answered the question, just go back in and, and redo it. Also, we're at eighteen hundred and fifty-six. Or as Beck says, six million. <laughs> well, that's probably the pain pills talking because Bex broke her arm. Ah! Oh, Bex. Yeah, well, didn't you see her pictures on the thing? She's been doing painting with the other hand. Ooh. She There is a portrait oh, of yeah. her of her cast. That's very nice. So, Bex, we want you to get better. It's we're, We'll go with six million because we're just going to humor you. <laughs> six million viewers and climbing. So, um, so, join the group if you'd like. Everybody's great. They're posting artwork. There's people asking for critiques. There's just all sorts of fun and just it's a really cool group of very positive people. Still no trolls in a year, Katie. Has there been a troll that we've had to Not really. do anything with? Because you guys are awesome. So, so well, anyway. There's stuff that looks like it could be trolly. It turns into a really cool discussion. Which it's is my well, and it's product. usually more like somebody's saying something and they're not yeah. really sure how to say it, and so it just might have been lost in the verbal translate or the you know typing translation as far as the yes that so all right so my motto for the year this is I, I pick some weird little motto every year and this year I want the motto to be for the Jerry's live peeps be the captain of your own artistic destiny what does that mean um, to me, that means, and I've picked this because this is going to be my motto for this year. 
Um, and I spilled pouring medium, and it's like I'm picking at it. I need to stop. I, it's like, I, I'm like, what are all these weird little bumps over here? I spilled some pouring medium when I was doing testing yesterday. I put my hands behind my back, Rita. Sorry. Um, be the captain of your own artistic destiny basically means you can only be responsible for you, right? You, you can go to art classes. Uh, you can audit things online. You can... Uh, you know, go. To, you can even go to art school and not get the full benefit of, of what it is that you're going to or, you know, watching YouTube videos. It's all in taking information and actually putting it into practice. And I think some people, there's always kind of a merger where they kind of lose the, the ambition. Does that make any sense, ladies? Where you like really want to do something and you're like all jazzed to do it and you, you watch the tutorial and all that and then you're like, seems kind of hard now so and then you don't do it but you know I mean everybody does that store, right huh buy all the food and I'm gonna make something when I get home and then I get home and I'm like I'm gonna order pizza yeah it is very much the same thing and then you throw away spinach a week later because it wasn't yes so so this year needs to I want everybody to make this year about taking those reins for yourself about okay I want to learn about this so I'm going to I like one of my things that I've, I've talked with Frida and Amanda about, and Frida and Amanda gave me pastels for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It was the cutest present. Like little samplers of all sorts of different brands and all these really beautiful dark colors because I said I wanted to learn pastels. So this is gonna be the year for me that Hades are high water, regardless of if it looks pretty and it's, it's cause I tend to be like, ah, I didn't control that very well, so that's done. This isn't going to be the year. It's going to be banging my head against the wall until I at least feel like I've got a decent command of it. Even if I don't end up liking it, that's fine. As long as I gave it the old college try, I was the captain of my own artistic destiny, then, then we're good to go. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is I always wanted to do landscapes. My great grandfather was a portrait artist, but he also did landscapes when he would go on vacation. That was his idea of a vacation. Um, and my mother's mother was a landscape artist in Southwest Missouri. So I thought that just, you know, everywhere you go, you see landscapes, right? I drive my son to school and that pastel landscape that we did was this cool scene that's on the way to driving him to school. You see landscapes everywhere, cityscapes everywhere. So start taking things that I see or if I travel places I go and actually just doing artwork of them. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be finished, just try to translate a little bit of the world around me. So that's one of my personal things. Um, my studio, Victor and Patty and a couple other people know about this that are viewers because they um, get funny little sneak peeks. My studio was buried up to here. I've got a new studio and now it's almost completely done. So I'm going to say by the, what's today, the seventh? Eighth. Eighth. <coughs> not next to, by not this coming weekend but the weekend after that on Sunday I'm gonna post pictures of my completed studio the woodworking might not be done on one easel because it needs to be sanded and restained but I'm gonna get it done because I'm now that I'm saying this in front of you I now, now I have no other choice but to do it so sometimes I'm one of those people that works best under a deadline so that's what it takes so that's what we're going with uh, and website, I've got to get that up and running. So I'm going to set aside time to work an hour a weekend on Sunday mornings with some coffee. However long it takes me to get it done, as long as I'm working that hour, if it takes me two months, that's fine. But at least I'm one hour closer to having the website done. So, um, does everybody else have problems like that? Does everybody else like get like, <laughs> I know you do, Frida. You, you and I have, we share a lot of problems. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the week I kids, but. <laughs> Are viewers saying that they have similar? I just got a question about where the best, if you should start with soft or oil pastels. With soft or oil pastels? Like if it matters. Uh, it matters, oil. it matters a lot. Do you have a climate controlled studio? You live in a humid place because if you, you like dust, yes. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. about you? Yeah. How do you feel about blowing blue snacks? We've got we've got the episode that we did on soft and oil pastels. Mm -hmm. 
we did one episode on oil pastels, we did one episode on soft pastels, and there was the one um, after party that we talked about both. So go back through those those episodes and review those. And oh, the after parties are also on those um, on those documents. Yeah. So all right. Well, if, if you get questions, let me know. These products are just products that I wanted to show that are gonna. I'm gonna start carrying things like this with me to help me make kind of artwork on the fly. I took stuff with me when I went down to um, Kitty Hawk to the coast. Uh, it's the coast of North Carolina, the Outer Banks, over Christmas. Decided that the family could just forget about it. We were going away, so we went and had a really good time. And these are things that I took with me. So. Um, actually, these are new products. Remember the fan pan, guys? We showed it, what, right before Thanksgiving, didn't we? And a kit finally just came in stock. I think, I think that fish brought it on their backs. Um, the fan pan is something that's really awesome, that would be really easy to take when you're out in the field. It's got a little water brush, but I would be using the Mimic Kalinsky <laughs> travel brushes. So this just came in stock, what, over the weekend, I think? Yeah, Monday. I so, Monday yeah. so these are there now, and they're what twenty one ninety nine like for forty. Is it forty eight colors? Forty two colors, I think. Does it say a lot? Of colors. Forty two colors with a water brush. Uh, we did uh, the was it the Mimic Kalinsky travel brush up uh, uh, social media thing that you did with the Christmas tree uh -huh. that mm -hmm. I went with you guys. Yeah. And we used that there, and it was really handy to just even in the freezing cold. To, 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 we didn't up. think it was gonna be that cold, and then we got out there, and it laid me out in the cold for like two hours. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I know. She's just just a tree. No, she didn't do that. But. <laughs> All right. So uh, then we've got the Marie's watercolor set of forty-eight. This is handy, and that it's got the lid. If you wanna try the new fancy zoomy thing, we've got a fancy zoomy thing. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> I'm okay. Trying to figure out what colors first. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited because then we'll be able to see the. Oh. I gotta put it where the square is. Oh, oh, sorry. In the square. All right. So this is the Marie's set of 48. It's got an ABS plastic shell, mixing tray, another mixing tray. I tell that I've been mixing. Little paper so you can do your color swatches. How about all these colors, two water brushes, a sponge, a little kind of dish. Then it's got this. Oh, sorry, I'm getting used to the new monitor. It's like, eh. Look at all that. Look at 48 colors, all these earth tones right down here. Your nice blues, greens. It's very well laid out. It's even got little charcoal and, draw and tortillions in case you would want to draw. And two brushes. So this is a great little travel set too. It's not quite as compact as that nice little fan pan. Here, we didn't show the fan pan close up. The fan pan is really handy. You can tell I've been using it because it's kind of stuck together. I didn't, wasn't good about letting it dry. So, that's so, it looks like a, the Pantone swatches, exactly. doesn't it? It's like yeah. I can paint with the color swatches. So, those are really handy. Um, let me show what I did with some of these. Oh, the Mimic Kalinsky, those are in stock as well. I love these. Yes. You guys have all seen the travel brushes that Amy uses that are very expensive and how much Amy loves <coughs> the synthetic Mimic brushes. Magnetic closure, size 12, 8, 6, and 4. And it's the synthetic Kalinsky with the really pretty wood handle they've got. Nice long barrel where it's easy to hold. It's got the little drain hole there in the top. So if you are bad about not kind of blotting the excess water out, it's not gonna get all funky I mean, you and gotta nasty. Throw them in your people, purse and go. people don't think about it, and not everybody's cuckoo about their brushes like I am, but that's the big one. And then look, there's a little tiny one. So that whole set of four, that is a really awesome deal. I think, are they still on sale right now? Do you know? I didn't oh, check yeah. to see what the price was today, but I hauled those along with me. That was 
really handy. That, this, this, ta-da, nice and easy to. Seventy-three ninety-nine for the brushes. For four brushes that you could, you know, take out of the thing if you wanted to carry one big one with you for just in your pocket or purse. All right. And the fancy gift box that I feel compelled to carry it in because I don't want to scuff the case, but I'm like, it takes too I, long to open. What is with this? I do the same thing. Yeah. But it's like, the case is supposed to go in here. I know. But I don't want to mess it up. All right, so accurate pen. Sketches are done with accurate pen. This was just trying some of the, um, ooh, my pouring medium was sticky. It stuck to the table. Um, just trying some of those colors out for the first time from the Beret set, just to see what the saturation was. This is just on a plain reflection sketchbook, is all that is. Just a regular paper drawing sketchbook, not even a watercolor sketchbook. And it's really, the paper's really not buckled um, at all. Just kind of getting a little bit of a color sunset. But Tina actually sent me the picture. Tina sends me really awesome sunsets. Apparently Tina thinks I need to be a landscape painter. Or cow painter. Yeah, because what? You don't usually do. I know. It's your challenge for the year. Yeah, it is. Um, this is a picture of my son Elam at Jockey's Ridge. They, I thought they were like on some other side of the sand dune that was really steep and I was all impressed and it turns out that they actually leaned forward and took the picture at an angle to fool me and make me think that they like found a bigger place to climb the dunes. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. So that's just a quick little sketch of him there. So, and that was with the Marie's set. And that's on our um, Reflections watercolor book that's got the 140 pound paper and the little tear out perforations so you can tear the pages out. That was a marker one that we did a while back. Then this is the Stillman and Burn Alpha Series sketchbook. These are some ones of Jockey's Ridge. I took this back and actually drew this there to have a little bit more time to work on it. It was just the sand dunes, the really pretty shadows coming down that the trees were casting, um, trying to figure out how would you do little footprints and kind of manage that and how would you make the weeds in watercolor. So that was really fun. I enjoyed that. And then this was at the Wright Brothers Memorial at Kitty Hawk on Christmas and you know what there was a government shutdown but there's a bad gate with no gate so <laughs> we walked in and got really pretty it was really pretty government still shut down us artists are suffering so behold I bring you art from the national parks <laughs> don't judge me Frida you have your judgy judgerson face on I don't know what yep. you could possibly uh -huh. be talking about right now yeah so I really liked how the clouds looked that day. It was really pretty. So, so that was kind of my foray into just making sure that I'm doing something out and about. Do we want to show that, I, since I didn't get anything with the fan fan, do we want to just do a quick sketch and try some fan fan colors? You can, work here. Um, you can that on your camera. Yes. Oh, and this is something I did. You don't have to be somewhere there where there's a landscape. You know, with all the forest fires that were the big, everybody was talking about it and everything. I was at Starbucks waiting for a friend. <coughs> Look, forest fire. Uh, what? There's trees. I wanted to practice the shadow of trees and the color. I'm just saying, they didn't make fun. Even pictures coming through over there, that smoke made such a beautiful. Yeah. Sunset. Yes, definitely. All right. So Everyone is disagreeing with you when you say you're not a landscape artist. Yeah, just I'm not. So you no, if I don't feel like I've got proficiency in it, I don't. It doesn't count. Um, while you're doing Can that, we throw something at her? I just <laughs> always want to. Um, <laughs> Thanks. Hey, uh, we have some questions sure. about the quality of the fan fan, like artist or student quality at first on the Marie's and the fan fan. Um, I have not really gotten a chance to, other than the Christmas tree, use this. I, when I used this for the Christmas tree, we were pretty surprised at how the colors lit up yeah, with this. Yeah, they're pretty saturated. For, yeah, and you, and you wet it down and pull color off it pretty quickly. Um, this is the point where a couple of times we were like, oh, wait, too much. Yes, it was too it. much, and I was having to like quickly pull water and pull color back off because it was just very strong. 
the Marie's set is, it's 48 colors. It's not bad. It's not, the, the, I guess the thing is, I personally, you guys have seen when we've done the, like, the fur and feathers episode where I did the watercolor cow, right, Katie? Ooh. I, I'm really big on one particular brand of watercolor, so when I use other brands, I'm like, get the sad face because it's not the brand that I'm used to you know it, it's for this being this is pretty decently saturated I found that the reds and things like that I didn't think like when you put them on wet with the Marie's they still weren't this bright a punch when they started to dry out now did I go back over it a lot no because it was the reflections regular sketchbook not the watercolor sketchbook so I was a little afraid to like really wet it down and, and put repeated coats of color on so I do need to try that um, more with some of those colors on a regular watercolor paper. Um, but we'll try the, we'll try and we'll see how the fan pan sets up. I mean, if, if, if it was me and I was gonna be going out all the time, there's not a question of which one I would take, just if they're both student grade, or even if once, if this was student grade and this is professional, I would still go with this because look at how much smaller that is right. for actually just working out in the yeah. field. You take good pictures, you do some reference shots, you just slap a little paint around just to kind of get the feel and the and all that. You can go back and tweak stuff like that later in a in a finished artwork. It's when you take a, you know, easel out, French easel, and you're out there and like Van Gogh and, you know, swirling clouds and hay bales and then I guess you get more into it. But I I'm I'm lazy and I don't like to carry a lot of things. See, it's funny because one of the viewers and I were just talking about how small the kit that you just put together yeah. was, and I just said, if it's that small, I just have room to carry more. Oh, yeah, That's no. what I end up doing. Yeah, but then you're not going to use it if you're, you know, I have the cell phone in the pocket and stuff in a purse that I could just, like, hook over my shoulder right. to carry, and, yeah. and a little pop cup where I could put it in for my water bottle, so... Plus, I was going in the car with kids that were like, why are you wanting to take so many things? Don't art. Even the art kid. All right. So I got this really cool picture from uh, when I was in Elizabeth City, and this is the Albemarle Sound. A photographer took us to this really cool spot with this little neat house, and there was the sound, and the sun was setting, and there were really cool trees, and it looked a lot like up north instead of North Carolina. So I took pictures because I really wanted to maybe try a painting of that. So we'll try a, just a quick sketch because I know everybody's got a lot of stuff going on and this is the first episode back. I'm gonna get where the house is. Now this is obviously a pen and it's not gonna erase. So I don't do like a really serious. Sketch, this is just quick and on the fly which I hope I'm not, am I leaning over into it? Cause I always forget. No, your head's down. Okay, good. Cause the problem I have is anytime I do it, I always have a bun. And so like my <laughs> head's off and my bun's like. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it's centered right now, Amy, just on the um, self-healing mat. Oh, yeah. wow. You can't see the, any of this? Yeah, you can see oh, all of it. Okay, okay. Oh, I see what you're Yes. All right. Yes. That makes sense. It's been a very interesting day today. I'm doing a whole lot of very like bizarre it's really things. Like the first kind of week. I know last week technically we were here. Yeah, I don't know. We for some like reason that didn't count. Right. <laughs> we were, I was only we were two here. Here for three days. Yeah. That's an accurate pen, right? Yep. And I'm just up varying the pressure. I can get like very light sketchy stuff if I vary the pressure. Now the red ones are waterproof, is that The correct? red ones are the waterproof, the blue ones are not, sadly. I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> I, I, I have never done that. Yeah. What are, while I'm doing this, people, you could tell me what people are saying their new artistic New Year's resolutions are, because they better have some. Other than Beck, Specs clearly wants to get out of that cast. <laughs> that's that's probably high on her uh, her priority list. My 
kind of just stop buying work supplies and actually use them. Mm. <laughs> stop collecting and I'm start doing. It's a problem. That's okay. Well, I mean, it's not, but. I was just telling Katie I filled a whole boat bag with art supplies when we went to the beach in November. Did you use any? I did. I did a 10 minute sketch of my dog Gracie last weekend, and then my two year old improved it with some blue and red crayons. Oh, <laughs> no. It was a good sketch. It was too. pretty cute. Oh, I thought you meant that it was adorable that he did that. I was like, yeah, that's not what the mothers say when that happens. The puppy was adorable. Yes, the, her drawing was It was depends awesome. on if it was collaborative or... <laughs> yes. I did consciously make the decision to let him color on it. Okay. So. Wow. And it was adorable. <laughs> yeah, that was how I started in acrylics. So after Riker did that with an oil painting. Well, this one was just pencil and it was on throwaway paper, so oh, <laughs> it was just for yeah. practice. I'm getting a lot of do art <laughs> from yeah. Facebook do and they make a regular practice of, yes. of it. Okay, so while we're doing this, we could brainstorm about some things that, um, that I was actually thinking of for going in my own studio saying, you know, what do I really need to start doing to make sure, because I've been very slowly complacent in actually getting unpacked and in there um a big thing for me and that's this is something that maybe other people can say some things that you know help them is i love to listen to music um and anybody that knows me and knows about my dogs knows all the dogs are named after song titles or musicians or things like that um but so i have certain music that i will play for certain types of painting or artwork I also am really weird about um, starting out every time I go in where I'm actually going to go and actually paint, always doing the same thing. And I really should just do it every time before I go in the studio to have a kind of, you know, thing that I always do. I always have to have a cup of coffee or tea, preferably coffee, um, even if it's late. and have that and have the music on and have all the reference photos up if I'm using those and just kind of have it all set up where I walk in and you kind of, you know, stand and look and kind of sniff your, smell your coffee and have that kind of, ah, oh, I'm in here. This is, you know, a good thing. A ritual? It is a, a huge ritual. Yes. That was the word I was looking for that in, in drawing and trying to think and talk at the same time. It doesn't really work very well for me. Okay, morning. Okay, yes. Coffee, yes. Wild. That's that's Katie and uh, Frida, is, is the, but first coffee. So. Don't talk to me unless I've had my coffee for the morning. I was yeah. gonna say it's it's, it's really for no one good. should. <laughs> it's for y'all. Really, good. no one should because. I mean. Frida can be a wee bit testy. I'm I'm not testy. I just I'm gonna be going. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is not my fourth cup. Let me have my fourth cup and all. Um, so rituals are good. Uh, planning a certain amount of time every day to work in your studio, whether you get anything done or not. Right? Mm -hmm. if, if you don't feel like doing it, clean up in there. Prime some canvases. Okay. Um, clean out a drawer that, like, like if you know you... And, you know, some people work better with clutter. Some people don't. If you know you work better with clutter, how like a nice creative clutter going on in there. Sometimes people go in and they're like, oh my gosh. Sometimes it's inspired. Yes, don't know where things are because it's it's or everywhere. If you have a lot of clutter, start going through it because you might find something that inspires you while you're doing yes. it. Yes. Like and when Amanda found nine rolls of washi tape in her drawer last week. Nine rolls. After asking if Frida had any. <laughs> nice. I've forgotten those. I won't say I'm surprised, but I do find it entertaining. Um, it's clean though. I'm a big proponent of doing color swatches with your specs. Yes. I love to color swatch. Well, and you know that's, do it anyway. that's, that's good to do anyway, especially if you you bring in a new brand of something that you're wanting to work with, just because then you've you've played with it, you can feel what the differences are from another brand that you've used. You know what the saturation of each of those colors are, because even if a color is a certain, you know, you've got a Naples yellow in one brand and then a I Naples yellow in an old brand, it's gonna be different. Different. Or it might mix differently here. Might... Yes, very much so. I'm trying to just draw more consistently. Five minutes a day during the week, mm -hmm. 10 minutes on the weekends. There 
there's a website um, that a lady runs where she does a sketch fest, a 48 hour sketch nice. fest every so often, and she puts up prompts. People can submit prompts, and then you just draw whatever you feel like for an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fun. That's kind of a nice little luxury. Like Inko or Bellier? Yeah. Nice. And you can, it's, you know, any medium you want, whatever you feel like. That's awesome. Another thing we're going to talk about this year is mixed media. We're going to do like a couple things where we're going to do like the cooking show kind of mixed media work from the start to finish. Because even though I tend to be much more like fine art geared oriented, I really enjoy a good mixed media now and then. So we're going to do some stuff like that where we'll have the list, we'll even post it ahead of time where you can kind of see what products we're going to be using and then you can determine either if you want to get them ahead of time, you can work with us. If you want to just um, come and watch and see and kind of, you know, even see what you might have at home that you could use for that. This is a stump, I think. It's just very weird. All right, I'm trying to hurry so we can get to some color. Everybody's being very weirdly quiet. It's freaking me out. Everybody's watching. They're in awe that you just went whole hog with that pin. Oh no, did. that's, you know what though, and that's something where just like anything else, training yourself, like Frida's saying to draw, this is what I would make myself go do when I was in college. I would go to go take a break and kind of get away from everybody and just get fresh air and a breather. I would go and, um, sketch animals. There was an ostrich farm not that far from the college and then there were some cattle farms and some big like Percheron draft horses and stuff. So I would go sit on top of the, the roof of the car with a sketchbook and an ink pen to make myself learn to not erase. Because I was one of those people that would erase 900 yeah. million times. And I was like, I need to break myself of this habit. How am I going to do that? Guess what? You can't erase a pen. So it was just getting used to you know, using a finer tip at first and then gradually getting, you know, using a little bit thicker one. I like the little bit, I think this is a 0.5. And that's what I prefer. Okay, I'm making that taller because that looked really weird with that line of the water. Well, it was supposed to be shorter. And kind of get a little bit like ADD about this. I start wanting to try to draw everything all at one time. So Pretty I have to. Precious. Mm hmm mm hmm Yes. All right. It would take me an hour to get to the point that she did in just five minutes. Right. Oh, part of that would take me all day. Yeah. <laughs> well, part of that is learning to not focus on it, which yeah. is like the hardest part to me is just kind of letting, not overthinking it and just letting yourself do it. Well, one of the things I noticed with my sketch of Gracie on my dog was that it's much better than a 10 minute sketch of a strange dog that I don't know because yes. I had mm -hmm. her for yeah. nine years, eight you, or nine You have years. the observations and you're, yeah, definitely always a bigger to draw what you know. And I think that's that's where a lot of people, when they're trying to draw something they're not used to, uh, you know, people tend to want to draw what they're comfortable with and what they know. You it, portraits are the weirdest thing to draw of people that you don't know, or even sometimes worse about drawing people you do know, because you're so, or your kids or you, have a favorable you opinion of them, so yes. you assume, and then you're looking at them, and you're like, oh, wait, no, my kid is not symmetrical. <laughs> What's with this? Because you're all of a sudden studying it, and then, yep. So I think it's easier to draw, draw people and things you are not as familiar with because. It makes it look harder. Yep. All right. Colored Pencil Magazine says, looking great. <laughs> I hope she got my email earlier. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, that just kind of goes down there, doesn't it? <laughs> There's some rocks. Ooh. So these things are just going to be generalizations. And that's a good thing to do with this kind of stuff. It all doesn't have to look the exact same. I'm not going to draw every root on this tree. Make some just kind of large form generalizations for things, if that makes any sense, guys. Um, you're just suggesting. It's with the color and stuff like that. And you can kind of go back and hone the drawing if you need to. Sometimes you can capture more in the color for the shading and stuff. You don't necessarily need to do as much of the... of it in the uh, actual drawing. All right, we've got some little roots. We're gonna pop up here. All right. There's a lot of busy things over here that I'm not happy about. Don't want those busy things. What? <laughs> Katie just pulled me away from my spot and it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's just crawling around on the table. I She's trying to plug her computer in. Disconcerting. Uh, okay. All these new things have it running really hot and burning oh. through stuff. So. Now I don't know if I can get out. I'm back up. <laughs> have to not look because it's making me go. Right. Ah. <clears throat> Getting caught in the stuff. That's not my job. So many things are that, not so much. All right. So I don't, I think the clouds, I'm just gonna, Dang it. we'll deal with that more in the color. Okay. Uh, a little bit of shading here because this is We've decided you're way better at being a friend and a listener when you're doing things than we are. <laughs> if I'm painting, I am. I can't, or I like wander. Mm -hmm. You wander. Yeah. What do you mean, just? Her hand wanders across the page. Yeah. Um... Like today, I was filling a watercolor palette and got distracted and put a watercolor where I didn't want it to go. Mmm, that's always uh... shiny. Yeah. <laughs> <it's literally laughs> like... <laughs> I do that with color charts sometimes. I just get so much, ah, oh, this is, I'm putting color down. Whoa, I've done that one three times. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty color, but I don't need it three times. Yeah, all right. Uh, we're just going to leave it at that. All right, so there's our sketch. It's very rough. What? Oh yes, it's so rough. Oh well, I, I don't have this tree. <laughs> Get I, away. Didn't even, I haven't even noticed that. <laughs> what? I love that. That's your definition of rough. There's a tree missing. It was. It's got all the but this what's shading the house. So we're just gonna kind of see the hasty generalization of the. No, don't be hasty, Amy. No, that's it's okay. You can do it. It reads better if it's kind of. See, the, the, the ladies that I went with uh, to the Elizabeth City thing are like, this is why I did not go out and plein air paint with you. Because <laughs> I would have been like, oh, crap, I forgot that. That hasty generalization got me again. I'm bad when people are plein air painting, but I just start watching other people and forget yeah. mine. Uh, yes. But, um, but I like yours better. Yeah. And especially with doing houses and stuff, I was fascinated at how... How they could just like whip out these historical. I was just like, I didn't notice that detail. <clears throat> that was when I decided I needed to practice. Okay. All right, so there's a tree. I'm not going to say Amanda's anything about judgment. how it only took you two seconds to make that whole tree, <laughs> but it's rough. Yeah, it is. All right. And these I'm just going to pop out and have get the ready. Do keep in mind I did go to school. That's true. It wasn't like I mean I also went to school. <laughs> not I at the not level that I, I was. <laughs> my professors will say I probably was not the most 
helpful, fun person there. Because I was the one that always asked why 900 times and how and oh, really, that's not how I did that. <laughs> what? It, um, well, <clears throat> we just had a viewer who accidentally sprayed their palette with eyeglass cleaner. Oh! oh do you have any suggestions for... What kind of a palette is it? Nick! <laughs> what kind of a palette? Is it a, yeah, is it a, is it wood, is it plastic, is it, control C. This is way greener. Do you have regular color now? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, that's just a little bit of color and. Green screen right there. Yeah. Let's see what these Amy, can you push the um, other ones are. up just a tiny bit so they can see a little yes. bit better? So they can see what you're picking and stuff. Um, yeah. Let's slide this up. I'm working on the house. It doesn't have to be up under it. Yeah, these are very saturated. I'm going to. It's a John Pike palette. Oh, and it's the plastic. I would wash it with uh, just some. Um, very gentle dish soap, like an ivory or something like that, uh, and just soapy water, and that should take that off. Because eyeglass cleaner probably has some sort of not fun stuff in it. Colors that. Oh, violet with the greens. Not what I was expecting. It's okay on the top. Well, yeah. Now that you say that, it does. <laughs> What's the fun in that, Katie? <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with the saturation of this. I'd like I'm to gonna... see after somebody's been using that sand pan palette for a hot minute, I bet they turn into like Wolverine with the. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like just flip it. Cause you, Most when, definitely. You know, once you get to know where stuff is on your palette, you start wondering <laughs> crazy. No, I agree. Okay. You like me clicking through chats on the computer. Mm hmm. Just looking for which one's laying down, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So while that's drying, let's skip over to. Let's look at these blue things. And Katie's right, these are on there. I never said that I followed the rules very well. <laughs> yeah, Amy doesn't follow directions. She makes, makes her own. Yes. <coughs> Which is something like they said to Riker. Wow, you're so much less difficult than your mother was. <laughs> Which I think he said, I know, right? <laughs> Wow, this little light blue is pretty, uh, pretty saturated. Now, I would say that I, that this is the lighter one that's for kind of mixed media and light washes. This is not the best one for really slopping the paint on like I'm doing. Just saying, it was one of the ones we had one from another episode, so I was like, oh, we'll just use that. All right, so we've got like a nice little, do we get a little tangerine color here? Actually, probably pull some color and mix it over on the side. Oh, I like that. All right. Let that dry for a little bit. Huh? No, I'm just I'm just I'm painting on myself and wiping on my dress like I always do. <laughs> you should know I'm not by now not to ask that, Katie. Uh, what again is that sketchbook you're using? Uh, it's the Stillman and Burn one. That's the do, 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 do. the the uh, yeah, wirebound landscape series? such sketchbook. Yes, Alpha series. It's the Alpha. Wirebound. And they make one that's um, I don't know if the larger one is wire the thicker one's wirebound. That's the heavier paper. It may be hardbound, but I like the wirebound just because it's easy to kind of flip through. <coughs> now I'm doing something I wouldn't be if I had not thought about it as I'm painting on the back of one of my other things. <laughs> Just like checking color. It's practice, right? That's what we're here for. Okay, do you think those dry pretty quickly or? 
It's drawing pretty. Th these the actual, fan pans? Yeah, because they were saying, like, how long until you can fold it up and stick it in your purse? Um, it's it absorbs the water pretty well. I don't think it would be like a long time, but like if you're out in the sun and doing it, it's gonna dry like super fast. If it's cold or whatever, I think that's probably why it's sticky is because that day we were out and it was what it was cold. in oh, the yeah. upper thirties and a lot colder yeah. than we expected. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> that was a little. Uh, but even then, they don't touch each other, right? There's a little space between them. Um. Yes. Just a slight, but I mean, bit, if you're okay. putting any pressure or anything on it, you know. Um, all right. Do we have any information on how much watercolor paint is in there? Like, is that? No, there's not like a half okay. pan or whatever. It's not, Kate, you've got a figure for, for I think it's twenty one ninety nine right now. It's not going to be full half pans mm -hmm. and be I didn't expect be it. decent quality. It's just going to be a, a small amount, and it's not like they pop back in and out. But you can see I'm barely touching it, and it doesn't take anything yeah. to pull it up. If you're going and working on like a 18 by 20 block, probably this isn't what you're going to want to use because it's not, you know, this is more just for kind of sketches and... Make about Amanda. Unrelated. <laughs> unrelated. Myself laugh. I apologize. Amanda and her unrelated. <clears throat> okay, I need to pull this up so I can see a little bit better. All right. Are there any other questions other than the? I think we're just wrapped. Everything's been watching. Yep. Kimmy's husband is cooking dinner right now. I would Ooh. like an invite. Hey, that's nice. Just get yourself a husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just, can you oh, just go that right that out and do that? Yeah, exactly. Wait, my. <laughs> Everybody's been telling you completely wrong, Amanda. Didn't one. you know? How would you compare <clears throat> this to the Arches 140 pound cold press? This paper? Can I just pick it up at Target? Yeah, grab this. This paper to yeah. arches? This number one, this isn't this isn't cot, uh, cotton paper. It's a paper pulp paper. So it's not even gonna be in the same ballpark. And it's not 140 pounds. This is uh I don't know how many grams this is. We'd need to to have one of you guys look it up. This is just a this is probably I would imagine this is about it's one fifty GSM. It's probably a <coughs> About a so 98 pound paper, I'm gonna say, between 90 and 100 pounds. Yes. <coughs> 150 is around 70, 150 GSM is around 70 pound paper. Okay. A little beefier than that. That's cool. Okay, so yeah, so it's definitely not. This is gonna. And I think the, I think the other stuff is right around maybe 120. That's their heavier 120 to 100. No. Yeah, I think it's the next one up. That's the heavier duty. Yeah, that one is. Uh, their next one up is a 250, 270. Excuse me. Yeah. not the green I expected. All right, there we go. Tone it down. Oh, the front is like a mixing thing. Mm-hmm. Huh. Thank you for doing that because I would never <laughs> have figured that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the Urban Sketchers are meeting Saturday at 2 at Raleigh oh, Contemporary nice. Art Museum and they said all levels are welcome. All right. So if you are in the Raleigh area, that would be a nice little fun thing to go. Is it supposed to be? Isn't that when we're supposed? To, oh no, it's Sunday that we might have snow. Wintry thing. What is with that? It is seventy degrees here today. Yes, it is. North Carolina, where you get to view all your layers. Yes. Yes. All four seasons in one week. In one mm -hmm. week. 
Yes, I was very sad driving to have to do an errand at lunch instead of being able to go walk or something. Like, I didn't want to come back. Yeah. I wanted to sit in my car and. Do you think they would have noticed if we just didn't show up? Sorry, guys. Now, the, the one thing I will say that I don't like about this fan pan, and that's not that big of a deal, it's just me being picky. Imagine that. It's my job to be picky about art supplies. So let me have, let me have that. No. <laughs> uh, there's not a black or a gray. Which Even is funny, gray. because Which, when do you ever use black? Well, I just made, I made like a kind of a little bit of a chromatic... I would need to. Of Amy's. I, I also feel like black. black. I use chromatic. Right. I use no, right. Well, but but with watercolor, it's easier to yeah. to darken a color. That's it's different with uh, with um, other paint. Mm -hmm. right, let's see if we can make something closer. Getting closer. That's better. Okay. Yeah, it's just it would it would be nice to have something where you kind of gray something down real quick, real quickly, yeah, on the fly. <laughs> if if it was a finished work, Even I wouldn't do it. But is it? well, I just made a with a violet and a a violet. No, that's violet, burn umber, and a a little bit of a blue green. Which so. is why we'll be doing some color theory. Yes. <laughs> yep. Good knowledge for everyone to have. Okay. Any other questions? We'll probably we're we're running a little over now, so we probably could be close to being done. This is just kind of see how saturated this was. Give it a little go. Right? Mm -hmm. Looks pretty. Anybody have any other questions before we What happens sign? if you run out of a color on the fan pan? Um you would be out of a color on the fan pan. <laughs> you can don't. send me the rest. <laughs> yes. That was Amanda for anybody wondering. I wonder if you could put a gray, like if you I was used it yeah. up completely and cleaned it out. It does have its own little well. Yeah. So I wonder you if might, you could you fill might. it up with a very... It would just be how you'd scree it across to, because watercolor still wants to dry in a lump. You'd have to somehow... If, you, if yeah. you used a palette knife to... Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's something worth yeah, put a little worth, bit in, worth you don't trying. Need to fill the whole pan. No. It's not to look brand new like it is there, but no. it's definitely no. It's a little well, so where yeah. there's a well, there's a way. Where there's, there's a well, there's a way. way. <laughs> oh. Back in 2019 with the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If there's a pun to be made. <laughs> That's right. Freeze on it. We'll make it. Yeah. We'll make it. Back to the well. Oh, Lois asks, couldn't you just go back it with like a watercolor pencil and black and take care of those shadowy things? Well, no, you could, but this is more of would be what I would be using out in the field. Right. Um, you know, I mean, that would be, that would definitely be easy to do. It would be something you could keep, you know keep in the car or whatever. Have it off to the side. All right. Well, what are we doing? Oh, yep, we're we're about that time, aren't we? All right, so this is kind of a good, you know, indicator of what the little fan pan here can do. It's not a bad little gizmo, is it, ladies? I cannot wait. Believe it or not. What, till I walk away and you can try to? <coughs> no, oh, you ordered one, one. good. <coughs> Yeah, you'll have what a What was her New Year's resolution? Listen. Not for Listen. <laughs> that I wanted before the New Year, so it is grandfathered in. What? She said to me yesterday she was going to stop spending money, and then I came back from lunch, and she's like, look what I picked up. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. one pen. One no, pen. No, it wasn't a Kate, pen. with you, Amanda, no, though, morning. how expensive is one pen? Two dollars. Oh, that's not bad. for you. And I... I'm very, if you give a mouse a cookie about things, so I got a free set of watercolor tubes that I was gifted, and then I needed a new palette to put them in. 
and I got it for half off. So and I how like that how, was a thrifty thing. How many watercolor sets do you have? There, I don't. That's a question we don't ask. That you currently are using. Look, you don't ask a lady her weight, and you don't ask a lady the size you don't of her ask art an, stash. You don't ask an artist where the, <laughs> how much of this do you really use? Yeah. I mean, technically, I use it all. Yeah. Yeah. True. Very Even true. Even if it's just for swatching. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That's true. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> happy 2019. And next week is our first, or I think we're doing substrates next week, aren't we? Is that on the, the list? Can we guys check on Jerry's Live? I'm pretty sure it's substrates. So you guys just posts I've seen and then questions I've seen online and a couple other artist groups that I will say I, I, I'm not a troll in them, but I troll them for like questions that people ask. <coughs> that make me very sad because they don't, people make a lot of really bad substrate choices, yeah. a lot of really bad substrate preparation choices. So the whole episode next week is going to be substrate preparation, canvas, paper, panel, all those things that people ask questions about. I, on, on one of the threads I saw people talk about, they were buying really good quality acrylic primed linen that's ready to go that I would take the first pers that product personally out of the package and paint directly on and then they were putting inferior gesso on it and I just I want first I wanted to cry and then I wanted to scream and then I said some letters words four letter words in my head and was like no we're not going to do that so so that's what we're going to be talking about next week is making sure that people know the right way to be doing substrate preparation so that you can either decide is it worth my time to, to prepare this properly if I'm buying something on the cheap to save some money but then I'm having to add a bunch of, of stuff to it and time to it or are you getting something really custom that's really awesome that's going to help you in your artwork so that will be substrate preparation next week so that's something that I think can apply to everybody even for like we're going to do the paper preparation for like mixed media and things like that and we're gonna even talk about watercolor grounds and stuff that you can put on other things, other things to get absorbent, like hot press, cold press, uh, you know, even colored, mm -hmm. like we did the Daniel Smith ones that were really cool. So, so tune in next week for that. That will be JL87. Holy cow. We're getting there, Katie. So, <laughs> and thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see ya.